Hi, welcome again to yet another reading from the new novella, Anansi and the Book of Night. I am the author, Rubadiri Victor, and of course you can check the links below and you will see links to the readings from the other chapters leading up to where we are right now, as well as a synopsis of the story thus far. Right, so just a short, short, short brief synopsis before we get into this chapter, chapter 8. Um, there are a series of disappearances of animals all over the kingdom of animals and Anansi's investigating. She has discovered a conspiracy, a plot with seven members of the Council of Elders of the Kingdom, led by someone outside of the Council of Elders called Tiger Cat. Um, and Tiger Cat is in league with some shadow animals who have all the kidnapped animals far, far away from the center of the kingdom at a desert at the edge of the forest, far, far, far away. And the animals are all led in chains into this massive stone tower where there's a flash of light and the animals all disappear and Nancy finds this book called the Book of Night um, which she later discovers when it is opened um, it disappears the animals um, and they are transported to wherever they're supposed to be transported to and this book is given to Tiger Cat by the shadow animals to use against his own people. In return um, uh, Tiger Cat gets uh, carts of fruit and vegetables because the entire kingdom is now in starvation mode because all the animals that pollinate the flowers and, and, and fruit trees um, have, have been kidnapped, the bats, the bees, hummingbirds. Right, so that's where we are right now. Um, Alancy has used her best friend Lap as a kind of spy with the Bacchanal crew and now Alancy is investigating even further. Chapter 8 Bull. The next morning, Anansi woke up to yet another rumor flying around the forest. This time, the rumor said that bulls and cows were responsible for get, kidnapping the animals. Anansi had even started Animals had even started walking on the other side of parts when approaching cows. Some shouted nasty words at them. Now, Anansi knew that there was some grain of truth in this rumor. There were bulls working for the shadow animals as enforcers. Was the whole bull house in on the trade? She did not know. The first animal and Nancy spoke to about the disappearances was Commissioner Bull and he seemed very sincere in his concern for the bees and bats and in his ignorance of the cause. She wanted to get to the heart of the matter. She went to Commissioner Bull and asked him to broker a meeting with the Bull King. That evening, Anansi got the call that she was to meet the Bull King. She walked by herself through the many extensive pastures of the bull kingdom until she found herself inside the bower where the bull throne room lay. The grass was brown from drought. Two fierce young bulls stood guard by the king who sat high on his throne. The two bucks were stamping their feet, dust in the ground. Their eyes were red. The king did not look much calmer there and then, Anansi decided to tell the king a slice of the truth. That bull soldiers had been seen leading caravans of animals in chains. The king snorted <laughs> loud and roared. <laughs> he said that many young bulls were in fact going delinquent and going wild, even berserk since the drought. Thankfully, he said, Tiger Cat had been providing us with a special grass. Now, I know your allegiance, Anansi, but we bulls are considering supporting uh, Tiger Cat in his questioning of Bre Lion's throne. Lion is failing to answer any of the issues of this kingdom. We need a change to deal with all these new problems. <sighs> King Bull then promised Anansi 
that he would question some of his bulls about whether any of them had any hand in the disappearances or knew anything. As Anansi left the pasture, she saw carts pull up with massive loads of sweet-smelling grass. Many young bulls ran past her to offload. Anansi believed that the bull king knew nothing about the renegade bulls. She passed by the grove of the council of elders to talk with some of the seven loyalists. But no one was there. She then passed by the throne room, but Breline was not there either. She found Bre there and stopped him, inquiring about the king. There stopped and thought, then said, you know, his majesty has not returned from his errand from two days ago. What errand? asked Anansi. A messenger had word about the prince, said there. Anansi jerked up. What? She had just made up her mind to call a meeting with the loyal council members, the ones she thought she could trust. But now this other news clouded her thoughts. Her husband, the prince. She was about to ask there what he knew about the news and where Lion was going when a scream went up in the kingdom. <laughs> Sister Hen ran into the throne room. A flutter, of a flutter of feathers, a fluster of feathers, all panicked. The bulls had gone mad and were stampeding, smashing the entire kingdom. And Nancy ran outside through many groves towards the large market square that lay in the middle of the kingdom. All she had to do was follow the screams. When she arrived, it was not difficult to see where the bulls had passed. Flattened stalls, fruits and grass lay before her with smashed and broken trees and many wounded animals. What happened, Anansi said? Bread Terrapin said that the bulls had gone mad, led by King Bull himself. They had come smashing out of their enclosure and had rampaged into the square and were now running into the hills. Anansi was shocked. Anansi sprinted after them. What was going on? She had just left the bulls. Yes, they were acting strange, but, but this? There were too many coincidences now, but she did not know where this one was leading. The bulls going mad so soon after that wildcat, wildfire rumor that they were kidnappers. Were the bulls now considered a liability by those who had the master plans who would have, and the bulls would now have to be destroyed? She shuddered to think of the mind that would conceive such a plan. She saw the low trail where the bulls were running and instead ran up the hill that ran parallel to it. The entrance was blocked, but she jumped over. She planned to run up to the peak where she would be able to see the bulls part below. She reached the top, looked down. The bulls were hundreds strong, smashing through everything in their path. But where were they headed? Where did their path lead? And Nancy looked further down the winding road they were on. Just past the massive silk cotton tree on that part, Anansi saw an animal lying on the forest floor that they were thundering through. The animal was not moving. Could the animal not hear the pounding of hundreds of hoops getting closer? Anansi raced down the hill to try and head off the thundering herd. But what she, could she possibly do to stop them? Nothing. Except, suddenly, and Nancy remembered her gift. And Nancy raced down the path to head off the bull stampede, but she was just too late. They thundered past the opening she was running through, running towards. They were passing in front of her like a blur. There were so many racing down the narrow valley. About half the herd had already passed by the time Nancy arrived. And Nancy ran straight up to the stampeding herd and leapt into the air over their backs, popping the golden egg into her mouth. She instantly felt her body start to change, and Nancy began to fall into the rampaging river of muscle. And Nancy transformed into a bull. She landed with a shock, joining the raging stampede. And Nancy felt her body, big, brawny, 
taut and muscular, buffeted on all sides by other bodies like her. She felt the heaviness of her torso and limbs. She felt the power of her head and horns and hind legs. She felt the power of her brethren's bodies bristling and bouncing next to hers, raging forward in an avalanche of legs, hooves and intent. It was like one mind, hooves all around, moving in unison. A rhythm of power and wildness, single-minded purpose. She snapped out of it and started working her way to the front of the herd, jostling her brothers for space, edging others out with shoulder and snout. She barreled her way forward until she could see the king bull ahead, his massive horns raised like twin mountain peaks in the front. All around her, young and mature bulls, eyes were red with madness. She had never seen anything like it. It was as if they were all under a spell, as if they had all eaten a maddening herb. And Nancy wondered about the large carts of sweet-smelling grass that Tiger Cat had delivered to the bulls, all courtesy the shadow animals, no doubt. But why? And Nancy saw the silk cotton tree just ahead as a speck. The doomed animal was motionless just ahead of it. If it did not move, the stampede would certainly trample it into non-existence. And Nancy pushed until she was just behind the king, but his two warrior bulls would not let her through. She had started to break from the herd. She could feel her legs galloping under her, straining to keep pace with the tree at the front of the pack. The three bulls in front were pure muscle. The silk cotton tree was drawing closer. The animal lay just beyond the herd. She left... She had, she had to head off the king bull and force the herd into the river, through the trees on the left, where hopefully the water would wash some sense into them. At the very least, she could try to save the animal lying in the pot. She pushed against the backs of the two warrior bulls protecting the king, but they were too strong. They would not let her through. They were coming up to the last small exit on the left through the trees. The small silk cotton tree was right after, and Nancy gave up trying to head through the, the two protective bulls and instead concentrated all her energy in a huge heave and a leap of fate. And Nancy ran up the embankment on the right and leapt down at King Bull. Her head slammed into his side and she and he and his two warriors tumbled over. She felt the power of muscle on muscle as their bodies slammed into his and they all four rolled and got up, their 16 powerful legs still galloping. But now she led. They bounced off her and changed direction slightly. She was shaken and disoriented from the fall and the roll. But when Anansi looked up, her gambit had worked. The force of the collision had diverted King Bull down the path to the river. She could hear the rest of the herd turn, blindly following. They all crashed through trees and brush until at last they plunged into and through the river. The force of the water slapped the bulls as they raged through. They ploughed forward through the water but soon began to slow midstream. Soon they all stopped, shaking their heads and horns. <sighs> King Bull's huge head came out from the deep water, shaking the water of his head and horns. He snorted, Where am I? He looked around at his herd, all standing and swimming confusedly in the raging water. And Nancy turned in the river and swam and trotted back to shore, running towards the broken brush until she reached the valley floor again. She then turned down the path to wake the animal that was lying there to tell it what it had just evaded. She passed the silk cotton tree and could see the animal just ahead. She ran up to it and stopped. Lying unconscious in the path was King Br'er Lion. Somebody had somehow knocked Lion unconscious and placed him in the part of the stampeding bulls. Bulls who had just been accused of kidnapping the missing animals. And as he ran forward, past Lion's unconscious body to the next turn to see what other surprise lay ahead and stopped suddenly. The valley road of the stampede led to a steep precipice with a straight drop down to jagged rocks hundreds of feet below. A raging waterfall was to the left. The bulls 
have been racing to their doom. Who could orchestrate something like this? And as he shook her head, looked down at the jagged rocks below and turned back into a spider at the cliff's edge.